You're all very kind. Thank you very much. Today I need to talk to you about connection. Um, your DIY businesses, a small medium business is DIY. You don't have a team, you don't have a social media team, you're doing it yourself. And even though I have a huge following on social media, I do my own social media. So often people will say, you know, who does your social media? And I'm like, oh no, you're talking to me. When you put something on a thread and I answer, you are speaking to me as often as possible. I will do social media lying in bed, in the morning, lying in bed at night, all throughout the day, in the bathroom, in the bath, on the toilet. If I, you name it, my phone is with me and I have a connection to the world with my social media. So I learned a long time ago that not only are we DIY, that ultimately we complicate storytelling too much instead of just speaking with really simple truth, with heart, with authenticity, um, with visually enticing images and stories, but just keep it really basic and simple. So today I'm going to give you the five checkpoints that I want you to put up in your office. So I need you to write this down. Okay, for me, education is everything. Entertainment is everything. Engagement, enticing, and elevation is about what created, creates you know, shareworthy marketing. The sort of marketing that you look at and you want to share with your friends, that you want to revisit. So this list is something that I want you to write down and as you're creating videos and any marketing in terms of social media, I want you to think about this list and why it's important. So let me talk you through it. To me, education is paramount. Even when I'm advertising my business, I need to teach you what it is that I do who and what it is for, why I do it, and I need to speak plainly. And too many of us are overcomplicating our why, what, when, and how. All the time we're just overcomplicating it. But the one thing we're doing too much is we're trying to sell too much. At this point, this is not selling, this is engaging. And so social media for me is more about engagement than selling. Although the irony is, is I'm selling on the periphery. I'm selling on the periphery because if you're attracted to me and my brand, then I'm selling you whatever I'm selling anyway. So stop trying to sell with discounts and money and budget and really look at what you're educating and what it is. Look at this. The best marketing in the world solves a problem. So you really have to ask one big question. What is the problem that I solve in my business? And I talked to Animoto's marketing team. I said, what are the problem you're trying to solve for your clients? And of course, it's two things. Can I get a return on investment on this product in my brand? And can I learn a new program and do I have time to use it? So I feel the same way with photography. I'm a portrait photographer and I educate businesses all around the world and how to connect. But the truth is, is we overcomplicate what it is we do and how we do it. So I'm gonna show you a little video that I use to speak very plainly about what it is that I do. Now, to me, find out whatever is the problem that your clients need to overcome and answer their problem in your marketing. Make it very plain, it'll be one or two problems. Make it very clear that you can answer it. Um, entertainment is everything. You can do it humorously, visually, intellectually, but the truth is, the more entertaining your video is, the more people are gonna watch it. So you can either be funny, you can either be smart, or really you can just be visually compelling. But you have to be one of those things. So really look at videos that made you stop scrolling, and the truth is, is you get three seconds to stop people on a thread, three seconds. So the first five to 10 seconds of your video really has to be the most visually dynamic. And 80 to 90% of our videos are being watched without sound. So you're creating words and music that might never be viewed. So unless you're visually compelling in that first five seconds, what is actually gonna make you stop and watch it? So Facebook particularly have this great feature where you can right click top of the post and save your post. And if I see a video, I'm in a doctor's room, I don't turn on my sound, I see a video that is visually compelling, I'll straight away save it until I'm in the car or back in the office or home where I can re-watch it. And that's one of those things people will come back to, but they're not even gonna stay with it if you're not putting something in there that is grabbing them very, very quickly. For me, engagement is anything shareworthy. It's when you connect, comment, or create conversation.
Okay, so one of the things I have done to build my social media, because I never bought likes or even boosted my page until I got up to around 200,000. Um, how I built my social media was I call it hot thread. So whenever I would post something visually compelling, usually a beautiful image with a little short story, I either ask a question in my post or I engage in some way in my post. Mostly I educate because I am an educator and because I teach businesses, it's very easy for me to put an engagement or an education post on my image. So I educate how I shot an image because my followers are photographers. So I'm educating with basically metadata. I shot this here, I shot this with this light, with this product, with this lens. And because I'm educating, my audience is actually getting something from me. And this is what a lot of us aren't actually doing. We're not giving anything. You're actually putting out social media and hoping for attention without giving anything in return. And to me, that's not how you get clients. The more you give, the more you get. The more I educate, the more I get. The more I entertain, the more I get. Uh, when my audience was smaller, so under uh, 40,000, um, I definitely put more personal entertaining posts because I'm quite quirky, you know, I fall over, I do silly things, I, I hit my head one day and got this big bruise on my forehead and I, you know, played it all out on social media and everyone loved it. As my audience got over 100,000 and then over 150,000, it got less personal and more business. But I really felt the personal entertainment that I had and the connection that I had in the beginning was my favorite time. Like I loved it back then when I felt like I knew everybody following me on social media and you really knew that you were following me. Now I feel like I'm a little bit more impersonal in terms of just being more professional. I'm very careful with what I write and why I write it. And I definitely am more about work than my personal life. For me, a hot thread is when I post something interesting and then stay on the thread. I can stay on a thread for 30 minutes, even 15 minutes, and I answer the initial reaction to my thread. As soon as people see me come up on my thread, my followers start talking to me and I create conversations instantly. I have huge engagement on my page. My engagement can go up into the 85% in my big page because I do this. Um, I'm also very interested in what you think what you have to say and any questions you have around the education on my post. So I choose education above anything in terms of when I post, I make sure you are learning something or getting something from me. In what world are we really interested in other people unless it impacts us? In what world, I think humans are incredibly selfish. And so if you think about marketing in terms of all humans are selfish, we don't really care about you, we only really care about what we're getting, doesn't that mean all of your marketing should be to me, not at me? So I don't care if you wanna talk about yourself, give me something, because I'm the viewer, I'm the consumer, and ultimately I'm the person that's going to follow you and convert me into money. Oh, my microphone just slipped straight down the back of my dress. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna, I think it's gonna settle right there. <laughs> Um, for me, enticing is everything. You know, when people create marketing, I always say to them, a lot of the time you're just trying to sell. You're just trying to sell. And all I hear is, it's this much money and I want you to give me this much money. But you haven't actually told me what I'm getting. So when was the last time you enticed me? Okay, because when I go to Barney's or when I go to Macy's or when I walk past Louis Vuitton and see that bag in the window or I suck up to the Gucci window in Italy, and I see that bag that I dream of owning one day or that Le Bouton shoes that I really want, I'm enticed by owning these products. I'm enticed to get them and want them and desire them. And the enticement that we feel really as consumers is that you have something that I want, but you're making it enticing to me. And that is why I want it. So when was the last time you really enticed me? And I know you want work and business, but enticing me to your product and service is gonna get you clients way before selling me something. Because before you sell it, you actually have to have me emotionally connected to your brand, product, and service. And until you do that, I'm not enticed at all and I certainly don't want it. This is not about you right now. And in fact, if you make this about you needing money, you are going to be repelling in your social media without even knowing why. I call it stinky. I call it that time when you're kind of stinky 
but you don't know why. And there's so much energy that you put into your posts and so much energy and you don't realize how much it attracts people. So when you create anything for social, I have to do it really authentically. I have to do it from a heart and I have to have a really authentic message to me. So for me, I really come down to this. The last one was I want to elevate. And I mean elevate humanity. I want to elevate social media. There's so much negativity online. There's so much trolling and nastiness and drive-by shootings, I call them. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is I want to put a positive message into my social media every day that is empowering. I have an empowering brand. I'm an educator, so I can empower you to make money in your business. I am a photographer, and I can empower you to have beautiful portraits done, and my work is empowering. So everything I want to do, I want to elevate outside of me, pushing out always is elevation. Um, I want to speak with purpose. I want you to understand what I truly want and what my why and what my mission is. Now, I've heard this a lot over the last 10 years. What is your why? But the truth is, is you must know what your purpose is. You must know what your mission is. When you speak with your mission, your purpose, your voice changes. So I call it, I speak heart. And it's very important to me that I speak heart, that you understand that when I am talking to you about my product and service, that you feel the love, the intention, and the authenticity of what it is that I love to do. You know, it's that whole, I'll have what she's having, right? The truth is, is when I am enthusiastic, I am so excited about what I'm talking about and how I talk about it, that I know that I am selling it without selling it. And the truth is, is I know I am both enticing and engaging when I'm in my full power, when I'm speaking with my heart. And this is where I am at my most powerful. So tick these off and ask yourself, what am I the best at out of these five things? What am I really doing every day without even trying? Am I already entertaining? Am I already engaging? Am I already enticing people? And I'm, am I elevating and speaking with my true voice? Um, also, education. You know, the internet is free, and we can learn just about anything. You can learn pretty much anything on YouTube. You can Google just about anything and learn it. But the education and entertainment are the two things that we still pay for. And to educate and entertain means that we still have a human connection to the people we're speaking to. And so to speak with these words makes it so much easier. Most small, medium businesses have a PDF or some form of digital design. In fact, most businesses, and this would be the first thing I would get a small business to do, is to create a digital PDF that they can email to the clients on their product and service. Why? Because you can design it yourself, you can get templates, you can get a designer to create a PDF for you, but ultimately you can create an incredible visual design yourself if you want to hack that, DIY it yourself, create a beautiful design that looks no different than a magazine, that's incredibly contemporary, that walks people through your product and service, that is visually stimulating, that is educating, that is engaging, that is elevating, and certainly is enticing to my product and service. So whatever your product and service is, you could create a PDF to do this. Now, if you are completely design inept, you can go to creativemarket.com. Look, there are magazine templates on creativemarket.com for $19. They're extraordinary. So the first thing I'd get any small business to do is to create this visually compelling, engaging PDF. The beauty of this is it can be emailed and it can be used, of course, in so many different ways. It is an online brochure or an online magazine featuring your business. It looks professional, it's very stunning, and it's very beautiful, and of course people will want to share it. So the other day I was actually thinking of this presentation, and I thought to myself, wow, check this out. I put my digital PDF into Animoto and to the Marketing Builder, and I actually created an animated PDF that can go online. And if you can get this under a minute, this can go on your social media and on Instagram.
So there it is, there's my animated PDF. So one of the things I think we're most afraid of when we're creating our own marketing is video. Because video comes with an entirely new learning tool, editing, and, and, and I feel like um, video is probably what stops us from creating this. But slideshows are just as powerful. And I think what you really need to focus on is just creating very visually dynamic product that you can share and just really working through what is share worthy and what is actually interesting. So just trying to stop you from scrolling is really my, my biggest goal is to stop you from scrolling. And if I can do that, if I can stop you just for a minute to tell you my message, then I can show you what I do and talk to you about what I do. So this is a video, it was actually shot by Sally Sargo. It was created for a little New Jersey business here. So this designer has drawn this ring and something that she wanted to showcase was how would you take a ring from inception to um, basically the finger of a girl. I absolutely love this video. All right, what do we got here? nothing about video when I shot that. And the truth is, is that it's so simply dynamic. Uh, the irony is, is I didn't make up those words, they came out of her mouth. And the story that she told when she said that, I had to write that. I feel like I went back in time when I looked at all the videos that I felt had the most compelling message, or all the videos that I felt had all of those E's. This was the strongest one to me, because I felt that video. And what I loved the most about it were those words all came out of her mouth. So I did try to get her to do a narrative, but you know, getting people to speak a narrative is hard. Not a lot of people can speak on camera and it's very hard to speak to camera. So I realized I didn't need to have her talking to camera at all to tell a great story. I simply had to really simplify the story I wanted to tell. I have not had my portrait taken in 17 years. You know, today I feel more beautiful than I have ever felt in my life. I asked her to describe herself. I am a mother, I am a wife, um, I'm a goddess, and I loved it. I kept it simple, I made my message short, and to me that is one of the most powerful storytelling that I could possibly put out there as a portrait photographer for my business. You have some big opportunities in front of you. And one of the first is Hallmark Holidays. So to me, we create this billion dollar consumer industry where we have these Hallmark Holidays, whether it's Christmas, Hanukkah, holidays, Thanksgiving, family portraits at, at holiday time, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day. These Hallmark Holidays, they exist throughout the year. And if you could create 
uh, a compelling a compelling video series or at least animated series for Hallmark holidays, you've already ticked off four or five of the biggest consumer holidays of the year. This is when our public are hardwired to look for gifts and hardwired to spend money. These stories are all beautiful. I could think of an incredible story around family, around coming home, around seasons around Valentine's Day. I could even think of an incredible story to promote my business around an anti-Valentine's Day. So you don't have somebody special in your life this month? Let's go wild. I could think of something fabulous to do with a girl's day out drinking champagne with single ladies. It doesn't matter to me what the story is. I can find a powerful narrative that goes with it, but just keep it simple. You know, we need to speak plainly to the people out there. We get so lost in our own businesses that we forget to speak the most basic language there is. And that is what the consumer is attracted to and what the consumer knows. Okay, we must speak their language and we must move them as quickly and effectively as we can on social media. You know, one of the biggest stories you can tell is your story. What I love about the Gold Tinker is that they have four craftsmen that work in their studio. And I feel like those four men are creating beautiful jewelry that will be worn and handed down for generations and generations. But what makes that video compelling is that you're getting to see this ring handcrafted. You're not seeing it finished under bright lights. You're seeing it made from scratch, from a drawing to this girl's hand. And in that moment, she would treasure that video forever because this was made for her. This was crafted for her. And that ring will stay in her family for generations. And that diamond is at least 40 million years old. And that is what is incredible about that story. Your product and service, the, the what you offer and what you connect to people is the, what you're selling. Okay, but before you're selling me that final product, I have to like you before I buy from you. So if you can connect me to you in any way, if you can connect me to what you do and how you do it, then I'm going to be drawn to your brand. Okay, so you just need to show me behind the curtain. What I love about that crafting is I've seen a lot of crafting videos. When I turn on uh, Facebook, if I see anything being made, I always watch them. There's something incredible about watching what you create with your hands. So if you create a product yourself, if you make a product, if you design a product, or if you have created a business and service that you built up yourself in your garage, in your spare bedroom, this is a story worth telling because this is a human interest story. So the first thing you should have on your website is a story about you. You also have the ability to follow just about any one of your clients through the process and experience of what you do sell and create and make, right down to them experiencing it, being there behind the scenes. This is what is the most powerful thing you can create in marketing. Any questions for me? <laughs> All right, you want me to go back? Because I want to come back to this. I feel like when you're here, I feel like this may have been something that you have heard before. This may have been something that you have seen and said, yes, we're always told to speak heart, but how? How do I speak heart? So let me break it down for you. To me, I feel like I sat down, and you can do this lots of different ways. Grab your iPhone and record yourself talking about what you love the most about your business, what you love the most, not the bits that you hate, not the bits that you struggle with, but what you truly love about what you do. And I sat down and I put my phone down and I put it in front of me and I told a friend what I loved the most. And as I just talked, I let it come forward. You know, this is what I love the most about connection. This is what I love the most about watching people go through this transformation. This is what I love the most about experiencing meeting people and spending time with them. This is what I love the most about my clients. What I see the most in my clients is that they feel this. I love it when they pick up the product. I love it when they do this. I love it when they refer me. And I just, I just chatted and I just talked authentically about what it is that I love. I went back and I replayed that and I basically transformed transcribed it. I sat down and in that moment when I was just talking about what I truly love, what I really loved came forward. 
and you could hear it in both the enthusiasm in my voice and the complete passion for the way I was talking about it. I sat, I transcribed it, I wrote it down, I created taglines. The most powerful tagline in my business, I have two taglines and neither of them are taglines, they're promises, okay? So one of them is an invitation which is inviting you to come to me as a product and service. So instead of being uh, taggy, I basically have said, I invite you to a personal session with me. It will change the way you see yourself. So to me, if I could get you to create one thing here, it would be a promise. What is your promise? And don't make it literary. I don't want it to sound like you read it. I don't want it to be poetic. I don't want it to be a Nike slogan. I don't want it to be something that is kitsch. I want it to be a simple promise or an invitation. My other promise or my other, I call it, I call it a promise, is I want to take the best photograph you have ever seen of yourself. That's a big promise to me. I'm answering a problem when I say it because I know that you don't believe that somebody can take an incredible photo of you. And I know I'm answering the problem and I'm overcoming your problem when I say that to you. I'm also putting out a very bold statement because I believe I can do this. Um, when I first wrote that, I sat down and I thought a lot about it and I realized it was the most empowering thing I could say to a human being. I want to take the most beautiful photograph that you have ever seen of yourself. And I feel like that promise to me goes through every cell and core of my being. I truly believe it. So what is your promise? Because when you tell me what your true promise is, that's your purpose. And that is what you tell people. Because that's not about me, that's about you. When I entice you, not me, I'm not trying to tell you how much money I cost. I'm not trying to get attention from you. What I'm trying to do is tell you what you're getting because you're the one paying. And my job is to entice you to the experience of me so that I can then deliver my promise to you. The truth is, is that engagement is really energetic for me. And energetic means that when I post, I truly care about that post going out into the world. I don't post and then go for a run because the truth is, is I need to know what the engagement on that post is. I know the people who follow me know that I truly care because I can feel it in their response. I not only have an abnormal engagement for my page, I also have an incredible following. My followers support me like nobody I have ever seen before. If on a random occasion I'm ever trolled or even somebody takes a negative comment or something I've said, my followers will literally attack <laughs> before I have even got on there to answer it myself. And I never respond negatively. If somebody has something negative to say, it's okay, I accept it. I accept it, I try to be as gracious and as loving as I can. Okay, it's just one of those things. I feel even at 200,000 followers on Facebook that my engagement is strong still now. Um, and really the entertainment, um, the entertainment value for me has gone down with a bigger audience. Although I know that my education is more powerful than pretty much anything here. So I focus on this word here. But if your superpower is entertainment, if you are somebody that has a star profile and you, re you have a natural connection to people, Facebook Live, video, and anything behind the scenes is going to be your most powerful tool. So if this is where you know you interact with people, if you're all about the empowerment, this is gonna be where you interact. And if you're all about this beautiful product and service, then this is where you're going to interact. But the truth is, is I have to tick every single one to be compelling. And when you look at Dawn's video, I am Dawn, uh, to me, the most simple story told is effectively ticking all of those boxes because I believe that I accurately told you who I am and what I did. I believe I enticed you to this product. I believe I elevated just about every mum in the world that has ever looked in the mirror and just felt like she needed to be seen today. And I feel like the engagement in that video is off the charts and yet the simplicity is extraordinary. So keep it simple, speak plainly, speak openly, 
be powerful in your messaging, be authentic in your messaging. And the biggest journey you can go through as a marketer and a business owner is to find and own your own voice. Because you are more powerful than you know. The words you speak become the house you live in. And that is what marketing is to me. Yeah. Hafez didn't say the last bit. He just said the first bit. <laughs> so thank you so much. I look forward to seeing incredible, emotional, connected, engaging, empowering marketing from all of you.